Okay, guys, y'all ready to learn some new stuff? Okay, we are going to get into lesson uh, module 12, lesson three, which if you look in your book, um, that begins, sorry, on page, uh, sorry, I'm zoomed in so much I can't get it in the frame. That is on page 335. So 335 is multiplication and division equations. So I'm going to skip over this part with the uh, algebra tiles, because like I mentioned last week, since we're not in class and able to actually like handle the algebra tiles, we're just going to skip over that this year, which is fine. Um, and so before we dive into doing anything in the book, we're going to let me just move this out of the way and put my spiral here. There we go. And now I can zoom in again. I have already pre-written a lot of things. So um, before you pause the video, let me kind of explain what's here. And then you can pause it to write everything down. So there's two parts to the lesson 12-3. Um, we're going to be solving one-step equations like we did on Thursday. And then we practiced it Friday, Monday. But this time we're going to use division and multiplication to solve. To solve. So we're learning two more properties. Last week we talked about the addition property of equality and the subtraction property of equality. And the reason they're called the uh, property of equality is you're either using addition or subtraction to make your equation equal, doing the same thing on both sides. So today we're gonna to take that same idea. We're gonna either use division or multiplication and to keep an equation equal or balanced on a scale, we're going to use the same operation on both sides to keep it equal to the property of equality. So what the property says is you can divide both sides of an equation by the same non-zero number, you can't, so you can't use zero, and the two sides remain equal. That is a two, but I just realized it. My twos and my zs are terrible. That's an actual two. Okay. Um, Okay, so you can do, you, the division property says you can divide the left and the right by the, as long as you divide it by the same number, okay? So imagine if I had the scale set up in my room and I had a 10 on this side and a 10 on the other side, and I said, well, I want to cut them both in half. I want to divide this 10 in half and this 10 in half, and I would have to have a divide the 10 on both sides by two and end up with a five on either side. If I just divided one side, my balance would be off. So just keep it as simple as that in your brain. Just taking 10 on either side, dividing both by two, now you have five on both sides. So the reason that I underline this and put lots of red arrows is because this is the most important, this is like the formal, uh, you know, property definition, which, you know, you might run across in the future or hear a teacher talk about, and you're gonna be like, what? But basically what the property is saying is when an equation contains multiplication, okay, we're going to solve by dividing both sides of the equation by the same number, okay, and I'm, we're going to go through some examples that will make sense, but this is really, really important. I would start, put some arrows, highlight it, use colors if you have it, but if your equation has multiplication in it, a multiplication relationship, which I'll show you what that means in a second, um, <clears throat> or I'll remind you, you already know, then in order to solve it, we're going to have to um, multiply, I mean, divide on both sides if it's a multiplication. Because remember, when we were doing addition and subtraction, if it was an addition problem, in order to undo the addition or cancel out the addition, we subtracted and made a zero pair. If it was a subtraction problem to undo it or cancel it out, we added on both sides to make a zero pair. Well, with multiplication and division, you're trying to figure out um, can I get a, you're really not necessarily trying to get a zero, you're trying to get a one technically. Um, yeah. So what can I do to both sides of the equation if I have two thirds and I want to get rid of it? Or if I have, you know, a five and I want to get rid of it, what can I do? So we're, we'll talk about that. Um, but the reason that we're going to multiply if it's a division problem is we need to use its inverse, just like with addition and subtraction, it's inverse, what's its opposite, right? That made it a zero pair. The inverse or to undo multiplication, if I had four times five equals 20 to undo the multiplication, I could do 20 divided by four equals five. 
Okay, it's not its opposite. The ta the the proper math work, mathematical term is its inverse, and we've used it before. Um, so we're going to be using the inverse. If it's a multiplication problem, we want to get rid of it. We're going to use division. If it's a division problem, we want to get rid of it. We're going to use multiplication, and that's what you're going to see today. So if you haven't already, go ahead and pause this. Make sure you have all this written down, and then we are going to work a few examples together. Okay, so what do I mean by all of this? I'm going to have to put my glasses on so I can see my notes. Here we go. I just don't like the glare it makes, but whatever. I really do have eyes. Uh, and you guys are lucky because I actually put on a little makeup today and I fixed my hair. My high schoolers, their videos, my hair's in a hat and I look terrible. So it just wasn't a good day when I was making their videos. All right. So we're going to do 9A equals 54. Okay. Remember, just as we talked about last week on our Zoom lesson, and um, this is not about mental math. I know you guys can do mental math. This is about learning, showing me that you can solve a one-step equation, showing yourself and showing all your future teachers' tests, standardized tests that you have to take, algebra classes, college algebra classes, calculus classes, whatever, that you know how to solve these one, two, three, four-step equations because they just get bigger. We're starting with the easy stuff, and you guys have to show me the steps, okay? So let me go back to this. I know that 9a, from what we learned about variables a couple of modules ago, when I see 9a, I know what that really means is 9 times a. So several months ago, I started telling you guys, you're not going to see the dot. You're not going to see a multiplication sign. Sometimes you'll see parentheses. But usually it's just going to be the coefficient, which is the number in front of the variable, and the variable. This is a term and it means nine times a. Okay. So I'm saying nine times a, nine times something is 54, which you probably already know what it is because you probably know your multiplication facts, but that's fine. Let's just pretend you don't. Let's pretend this is a number we don't know because you will have some like that later. So um, I'm going to grab a red pen. Okay. No, actually, I'm going to grab a pink pen. I get excited. So if this is multiplication, let's pretend it's four times five, or let's just say it's nine times two. Nine times two is 18. To undo multiplication, um, its inverse would be to say 18 divided by nine is two. Nine times two is 18. 18 divided by two is nine, or 18 divided by nine is two, right? So in order to get this to go away, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by nine. OK, both sides. Right. If an equation contains multiplication, this is multiplication. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the same number. Well, how do I know what number to divide it by? It's the number that's over here by the variable. Remember, we want to isolate the variable. So you always start with the number. You always use the number that's with the variable on the side of the equation where the variable is. I want to get this a by itself. OK, so in order to do that, if I divide by 9, 9 over 9 is just equal to 1, isn't it? So I can just go, okay, that's just a 1. So I just have 1a, which is just a, right? You don't need to put the 1 in front of it. Some of you are still doing that. It's not wrong, but you just don't need to, unless you just need it for your own brain. Okay, and then I'm going to divide the other side by 9 as well. Um, and then if I know that not 54 divided by 9 is 6 because I know that 9 times 6 is 54. So I know that A is 54. Then you can check your answer. And you're going to be, you're going to have to do this a lot next year. So we'll do it with some of these. If I do 9 and I substitute in this 6 for A, okay, and I know that that's correct, right? Okay, let's try another example. I'm going to have y'all work a few. I'll have you pause it and work a few. Let's do 18 is equal to negative 3D. Yes, we can throw negative numbers in here. Let me scooch it up a bit. Okay, so which side of the equation do I want to work on? Okay, yeah, you're right. The side with the variable. So I want this negative 3 to kind of turn it into a 1. Basically, that's how I'm going to get rid of it. So it's a it's a negative 3 times d. So since this contains multiplication, I'm going to divide both sides by the same number. 
This is the number that I'm trying to get rid of so that the D can be by itself. So I'm going to divide by a negative three. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. You divide by negative three. These become a one or they cancel out. They become a one. I have a D now. Okay. And then a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So my answer is negative six. Okay. And so if I wanted to check it, Okay, I take my original equation, which was um, 18, is equal to negative 3 times negative 6. Is that correct? Yes, because a negative times a negative is a positive. So you can actually check your work. Okay, all right. So um, if you look, I'm going to just throw up the, um, just remember I had you guys turn to this page, which I think was what, 335? But go ahead and turn one more page over to 336, right there. And you'll see that this is the definition that we already put. This is the property we put in. This is the important notes. And these are the two examples. They also um, um, graphed them and then see how they showed how to check it. Okay, so you may have to graph them sometimes. It just depends. Some, it's just there's a reason why eventually you're going to be doing linear equations and you're going to have to graph them. And so they're just trying to show you how these are related and someday next year you will do that. So take a second really quick, hit pause and solve this one. I'm going to write it again up here so I have a little more space. 3x is equal to negative 21. It is a multiplication relationship. So to get the x by itself, Okay, what are you going to do over here? What are you going to do over here? And then what's your final answer? Take a second, pause, solve it. And when you've got it solved, come back. Okay, you're back. So in order to get the three by itself, since this is multiplication, I'm going to use division. I'm going to divide this by three, divide this side by three. These cancel out. Really, they become a one. So it's a little different. We're not making zero pairs like we are with addition and subtraction. We're literally just making a one because now I have one X, which is equal to, if I have a negative divided by a positive, my answer is a negative and it should be negative seven. And then you should have graphed negative seven. Okay. All right. Last thing. What I want y'all to do, let's see here. Nope. That's the next one. Here we go. Okay. I want you guys to hit pause um, and work these problems and then come back when you're done and um, see how you did, okay? And then we'll end this video and then we'll practice um, the second property. All right, pause and come back. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> all right, so hopefully you solved these by just dividing. All of these are division. Okay, you're gonna divide. We wanna get the K by itself. So in order to do that, I want to, if I divide by seven, these become a one and that gives me a K over here, right? And then that gives me an eight because 56 divided by seven is eight. Okay, I should have already had these solved. Uh, divide by 12, these cancel each other out or become a one. Technically, this becomes a 10, 120 divided by 10. And then you can check it, remember? You can check it by going, well, I know eight times seven is 56. I know 10 times Y, I mean, I'm not sorry. <laughs> if I put the 10 in for the Y, I know 10 times 12 is 120. All right, let's see if I divide both of these by three. These cancel out. This ends up being D equals to 26. Okay. Um, this one, if I divide it by 13 and divide this by 13, let's say I already have this worked out somewhere. Here it is. R is equal to 12. Is that right? No, 13. No, 12. And you may have to come over here to the side and do a little work. That's okay if I have to do that, right? That's fine, okay? But this is what I need to see. I need to see that you divided both sides of the equation, equation canceled it out or showed that it, it became one, and then your division, if you needed to do a little work on the side, that's fine. But this is showing that you understand how to do a one-step equation. Okay, if all I see is this, you're going to get half credit because I need to see this. I'm being very, very clear. And those of you know who haven't gotten full credit, if all I see is this, you will not get full credit. I need to see this. 
Okay, last two. I'm going to divide this side. You might see decimals, and, and on Thursday we'll get into real-world examples and fractions because they get kind of tricky. Um, okay, so these cancel out or become a 1. So I have an X on this side, and this should be 5. Is that right? Let me find my answer. Yes. Okay, so this is 5 because I know 2 and a half, 5 halves going to 2 and a half. And then I made y'all do one that required a little bit more work. So you may have had to come down here and do this business. Oops. Okay, show you're dividing both sides by 41. Your Z comes down. I know I have this work somewhere on my paper. Where is it? Oh, there it is. It's right there. Okay. Um, and it comes to 41. So when you do the work over here, you get a 4. Oops. If you want to check your work, that comes 164. When you subtract that, you get 41 and it's a one. So if you did some division and you maybe made a mistake and you're not sure where I came up with the answer, um, that's where it is, okay? So hopefully y'all did well on these, okay? This is using division to solve a multiplication problem, okay? Take a break. We're gonna come back and do using um, uh, multiplication to solve a division problem. And those will be the two new things for today. See you in a few.